Welcome to the Transitions Daily Podcast. Transitions Daily is an online recovery group that offers a daily distribution of popular recovery resources accompanied by a secret Facebook group for discussion. We hope you enjoy today's readings. This is Transitions Daily for October 4th, read by Cindy L. from Fort Worth, Texas. AA thoughts for the day. Ground Zero. War fever ran high in the New England town to which we knew young officers from Plattsburgh were assigned, and we were flattered when the first citizens took us to their homes, making us feel heroic. Here was love, applause, war, moments sublime with intervals hilarious. I was part of life at last, and in the midst of the excitement, I discovered liquor. I forgot the strong warnings and the prejudices of my people concerning drink. In time, we sailed for over there. We landed in England. I visited Winchester Cathedral. Much moved, I wandered outside. My attention was caught by a doggerel on an old tombstone. Here lies a Hampshire grenadier who caught his death drinking cold small beer. Ominous warning, which I failed to heed. Bill W., Alcoholics Anonymous, page one. Thought to consider. I have learned what the grace of God feels like. Acronyms. Heart, healing, enjoying, and recovering together. Just for today, endorsement from the three legacies of Alcoholics Anonymous. The newswires carried the news of Mr. Rockefeller's 1940 dinner, planned by John D. Jr., but attended and moderated by his son Nelson, all over the world. A few of the stories that appeared were somewhat lurid and ran under startling headlines. One headline informed the public, John D. Rockefeller dines tosspots. But all the stories plugged AA just the same. Even the tabloids gave us the glad hand. The total effect was to give Alcoholics Anonymous a public status of dignity and worth. Thus encouraged, considerable numbers of people went to their bookstores to buy the AA book. Orders poured in and our financial difficulties were much eased. Hundreds of requests for help came from alcoholics and their families all over the nation. Alcoholics Anonymous Comes of Age, pages 185 to 186. Daily Reflections, a necessary pruning. We know that the pains of drinking had to come before sobriety and emotional turmoil before serenity. 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, page 94. I love spending time in my garden, feeding and pruning my beautiful flowers. One day, as I was busily snipping away, a neighbor stopped by. She commented, oh, your plants are so beautiful. It seems such a shame to cut them back. I replied, I know how you feel, but the excess must be removed so they can grow stronger and healthier. Later, I thought that perhaps my plants feel pain, but God and I know it's part of the plan and I've seen the results. I was quickly reminded of my precious AA program and how we all grow through pain. I ask God to prune me when it's time so I can grow. As Bill sees it. To lighten our burden. Only one consideration should qualify our desire for a complete disclosure of the damage we have done. That will arise when a full revelation would seriously harm the one to whom we are making amends, or, quite as important, other people. We cannot, for example, unload a detailed account of extramarital adventuring upon the shoulders of our unsuspecting wife or husband. It does not lighten our burden when we recklessly make the crosses of others heavier. In making amends, we should be sensible, tactful, considerate, and humble without being servile or scraping. As God's people, we stand on our feet. We don't crawl before anyone. 12 and 12, page 86. Alcoholics Anonymous, page 83. Big book quote. Actually, we were fooling ourselves. For deep down in every man, woman, and child is the fundamental idea of God. It may be obscured by calamity by pomp, by worship of other things, but in some form or other it is there. For faith in a power greater than ourselves and miraculous demonstrations of that power in human lives are facts as old as man himself. Alcoholics Anonymous, We Agnostics, page 55. 24 hours a day. AA thought for the day. Am I critical of other members of AA or of new prospects? Do I ever say about other members, I don't think they're sincere, I think they're bluffing, or I think they're taking a few drinks on the quiet? 
Do I realize that my doubtful and skeptical attitude is hurting those members, if only in my attitude toward them, which they cannot help sensing? Do I say about new prospects, they'll never make the program? Or do I say they'll only last a few months? If I take this attitude, I am unconsciously hurting those prospects' chances. Is my attitude always constructive and never destructive? Meditation for the day. To be attracted toward God in a better life, you must be spirit-guided. There is wonderful illumination of thought given to those who are spirit-guided. To those who are material-guided, there is nothing in God or a finer life to appeal to them or to attract them. But to those who are spirit-guided, there is strength and peace and calm to be found in communion with an unseen Lord. To those who believe in this God, they cannot see, but whose power they can feel. Life has a meaning and purpose. They are children of the unseen Lord, and all human beings are their brothers and sisters. Prayer for the day. I pray that I may be spirit-guided. I pray that I may feel God's presence and power in my life. Hazelden Foundation, P.O. Box 176, Center City, Minnesota, 55012. I'm Cindy L., and I'm an alcoholic. We hope you enjoy today's readings. You can also receive Transitions Daily via email and discuss today's readings in our secret Facebook group. So for more information, go to dailyaaemails.com today. Other than the 24 hours a day reading, unless otherwise specified, all quotes copyright Alcoholics Anonymous World Services, Inc., 1952, 1957, 1967, 1973, 1975, 1976, 1980, 1981, 1984, 1985, 1988, 1990, or 2001.